Hey there, welcome to day 2,231 of What She Up To Now. Sharon Hornelson here documenting the journey and just sharing my experience as I transferred from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business back in 2017, so it's been a while. Just sharing what works, what doesn't work, and then content and things that I create every day. Kind of a summary of what I am doing or what I'm working on. Traveling right now, but today I'm talking about or talked about, already made the videos, for Supersize Your Business and the Let's Grow Annual Challenge. This year we're doing one thing every day to grow, and this month we're focusing on spirituality. So we're covering the SOAP framework today, and we're talking about the O in SOAP framework, which stands for options. Yesterday we talked about what is our current situation in an area or aspect of our spiritual life and spiritual growth, but something we want to usually improve or change or make better, right? I guess improve means make better. Uh, and we picked a topic. We told ourselves, what's our current story about this spiritual area of our life? What is What do we want it to be? What's our desired story? And whenever we do that, when we compare where we are right now and where we want to be, it creates a gap between the two. And the rest of the SOAP framework, the O, the A, and the P, options, actions, and progress, are all designed, those steps, to start filling that gap, to begin filling that gap, or to fill that gap so that we can then go on to continually improve another area or aspect of our life. So today we talked about different uh, ways to brainstorm options, right? We always want to remind ourselves that we don't have, uh, we're not boxed into just one or two things that we can do when we want to change or improve something. We always have lots of options. And a lot of times our thinking causes us to be stuck in believing that we only have a couple of options. So today we talked about collaborative iteration, meaning uh, work with other or ideation, work with other people in order to come up with ideas and possible ways of filling that gap. Uh, and then we're going to do like I always recommend that we do brainstorm at least 10 possible options. And then we're going to pick the three that we like the most and we'll move forward with them for the rest of the process. For Supersize Your Business today, we talked about something I really don't have a lot of experience personally with, but there's a lot of examples of it out in the world. And that's having a brand ambassador for your product or service or for your brand. And, you know, I talked about some famous brand ambassadors, some people that they just mention your product and that they're passionate about it or support it. And it takes off. Think of Oprah Winfrey's Christmas giveaway, right? Her or her wish list giveaway or some of the uh, things that she's endorsed over the years. I mean, if she has someone on her show, they pretty much automatically become famous. If she reads a book in her book club, that book becomes a bestseller. Uh, that's how much power and influence she has and credibility uh, in different areas and aspects. So she's an incredible brand ambassador, sometimes intentionally, sometimes she just finds products and services she's passionate about and shares them. And then I shared other examples too uh, in, in people in sports or in different industries. So when we're picking a brand ambassador, we want to pick someone who represents our brand in a way we want it to be seen, right? So somebody with the same values, someone with the same, that embodies the characteristics of the characteristics of our brand. I think that makes sense. So we talked about that in a little bit of detail. And like I said, I've, I have not for any of my businesses used a brand ambassador. I've never hired a famous person to represent any of my products and services. We usually uh, just let them stand on their own two feet. But I think it's a great strategy and one that, you know, lots of companies have used very, very successfully. Now, what happens whenever you associate with a brand ambassador, <laughs> or you pick a brand ambassador and they represent your products, if they go on and do something that doesn't match the values or your brand, that can actually destroy your brand. It's like we see with uh, CEOs and leaders in different organizations speaking up for different causes that don't necessarily match what the, the company or the brand stands for, and they end up actually damaging the business because of that. So I think that's part of why I don't use brand ambassadors because we're all human and sometimes we do great things and sometimes we do things that we wish we hadn't. And so uh, when we're doing something outside of our brand and outside of ourselves, we need to be very cautious with who we hire and who we align with uh, for that very reason, because we are human. All right, that's all I've got today. If I can help you in any way, go ahead and ask. Just hit me up. You can always box me at pajamagramma at gmail.com. If you don't know what boxer is, you can Google it. And you can find it in the App Store uh, or in Play Store, whatever you happen to use. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.